Live, and of course, we're waiting uh, to listen to uh, the address to the nation by President Biden uh, upon his return from Israel, if that's what it was, a return. Uh, it looked like he was in some other orbit uh, while he was there. But uh, now he's going to explain to us, now he's going to explain to us uh, what he was doing and how he was doing it. But before we start, let's, uh, since we're going to run out of time, why don't we put on our, why don't we put on our uh, back, why don't we put our, on our balance of nature uh, ad and people while they're waiting can go get balance of nature because you may need it to get through this. I certainly will need mine. Body is an amazing chemical laboratory. When you give it the right chemistry, it functions the best. Balance of Nature is the ultimate whole fruit and vegetable chemistry. Get 35% off your first order by using discount code RUDY. So there he, he looks like he's getting ready to go. Don't forget balanceofnature.com. Promo, code, promo Rudy. code RUDY, 35% off. Now there we go goes. to the President of the United States determine the future for decades to come. That's what I'd like to talk with you about tonight. You know, early this morning, I returned from Israel. <clears throat> they tell me I'm the first American president to travel there during the war. Yeah. I met with the prime minister and members of his cabinet. And most movingly, I met with Israelis who had personally lived through you horrific can, You can speak to the, your listeners. by Hamas on the 7th of October. More than 1,300 people slaughtered in Israel including at least 32 American citizens. Scores of innocents, from infants to the elderly grandparents, Israelis, Americans taken hostage. As I told the families of Americans being held captive by Hamas, we're pursuing every avenue to bring their loved ones home. As president, there is no higher priority for me than the safety of Americans held hostage. The terrorist group Hamas unleashed pure, unadulterated evil in the world. But sadly, the Jewish people know perhaps better than anyone that there is no limit to the depravity of people when they want to inflict pain on others. <clears throat> In Israel, I saw people who are strong, determined, resilient, and also angry, in shock, and in deep, deep pain. I also spoke with President Abbas, the Palestinian Authority, and reiterated the United States remains committed to the Palestinian people's right to dignity and to self-determination. The actions of Hamas terrorists don't take that right away. Like so many other, I'm heartbroken by the tragic loss of Palestinian life, including the explosion at the hospital in Gaza, which was not done by the Israelis. We mourn every innocent life lost. We can't ignore the humanity of innocent Palestinians who only want to live in peace and have an opportunity. You know, the assault on Israel echoes nearly 20 months of war, tragedy, and brutality inflicted on the people of Ukraine, people that were very badly hurt since Putin launched his all-out invasion. We've not forgotten the mass graves, the bodies found bearing signs of torture, rape used as a weapon by the Russians, and thousands and thousands of Ukrainian children forcibly taken into Russia, stolen from their parents. It's sick. Hamas and Putin represent different threats, but they share this in common. They both want to completely annihilate a neighboring democracy, completely annihilate it. Hamas, to state of purpose for existing, is the destruction of the state of Israel and the murder of Jewish people. Hamas does not represent the Palestinian people. Hamas uses Palestinian civilians as human shields, and innocent Palestinian families are suffering greatly because of them. Meanwhile, Putin denies Ukraine has or ever had real statehood. He claims the Soviet Union created Ukraine. And just two weeks ago, he told the world that if the United States and our allies withdraw, and if the United States withdraw, our allies will as well, military support for Ukraine would have, quote, a week left to live, but we're not withdrawing. I know these conflicts can seem far away. And it's natural to ask, why does this matter to America? So let me share with you why making sure Israel and Ukraine succeed is vital for America's national security. You know, history has taught us that when terrorists don't pay a price for their terror, when dictators don't pay a price for their aggression, they cause more chaos and death 
and more destruction. They keep going. And the cost and the threats to America and the world keep rising. So if we don't stop Putin's appetite for power and control in Ukraine, he won't limit himself just to Ukraine. <clears throat> He's, Putin's already threatened to remind, quote, remind Poland that their Western land was a gift from Russia. One of his top advisors, a former president of Russia, has called Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania Russia's Baltic provinces. These are all NATO allies. For 75 years, NATO has kept peace in Europe and has been the cornerstone of American security. And if Putin attacks a NATO ally, we will defend every inch of NATO which the treaty requires and calls for. We'll have something that we do not seek Make it clear, we do not seek. We do not seek to have American troops fighting in Russia or fighting against Russia. Beyond Europe, we know that our allies and maybe most importantly our adversaries and competitors are watching. They're watching our response in Ukraine as well. And if we walk away and let Putin erase Ukraine's independence, would-be aggressors around the world be emboldened to try the same? The risk of conflict and chaos could spread in other parts of the world, in the Indo-Pacific, in the Middle East, especially in the Middle East. Iran is, is, is supporting Russia in Ukraine, and is supporting Hamas and other terrorist groups in the region, and will continue to hold them accountable, I might add. The United States and our partners across the region are working to build a better future for the Middle East, one where the Middle East is more stable, better connected to its neighbors, and through innovative projects like the India Middle East Europe Rail Corridor that I announced this year at the summit of the world's biggest economies. More predictable markets, more employment, less rage, less grievances, less war when connected. It benefits the people, it would benefit the people of the Middle East and would benefit us. All right, folks. American All right, what we're going to do is we're going to take a step out. Again. You know, we really wanted to hear some American resolve. We want to hear the American president. Well, you can see we were watching it on Newsmax, but we'll try to go back and get and get him. Uh, uh, I probably I, to, uh, I probably completely agree with my good friend uh, Eric, <laughs> who I'm sure has had enough of Biden that he can take. But I really do think we should we should listen to. Uh, I really do think we should listen to the president. Uh, I, I I I begin with the fact that I I I think this was an address about Ukraine, wasn't it? You must be mistaken. I thought this was supposed to be an address about Israel and Hamas and the Palestinians. And we got a little bit of that, but I, at least half the amount of time was spent bashing uh, Putin and telling us about uh, Ukraine because, you know, he's going to need more money for Ukraine. So uh, uh, and again, he's probably going to want it without any strings attached to it, uh, which uh, is a real problem given the nature of Ukraine and the nature of Joe Biden. But in any event, I, I, I do think it's very annoying that look, we spent a lot of time on Ukraine and uh, we spent a lot of time on Russia and we spent a lot of time talking about it. And um, the reality is to divert there and to try to use Israel as a way to leverage uh, the incredible amount more money he wants for Ukraine is really kind of disgusting. Uh, but he's been disgusting throughout this. Uh, he is not a friend of Israel. That is, that is the biggest joke in the world. Uh, there's no way he can convince anyone he's a friend of Israel when, he, uh, when he's given so much money and his, and his predecessor, Obama, so much money to Iran. Iran is uh, dedicated 100% to the destruction of the state of Israel. You don't give them $6 billion. You don't give them... Well, he, before that, over the last two, three years with the breakdown of sanctions, as compared to Trump, he probably steered another two, three billion to them. And of course, then Obama, on his way out of office, sent over what was it, 170 million in cash. Here's, um, um, here's Biden again. You know, here at home, which is an Islamic Maybe. phobia right here in America. It's also intensified in the wake of recent events that led to the horrific threats and attacks that both shock us and break our hearts. On October 7th, terror attacks have triggered deep scars and terrible memories in the Jewish community. Today, Jewish families worried about being targeted in school, wearing symbols of their face walking down the street, or going out about their daily lives. 
And I know many of you in the Muslim American community, the Arab American community, the Palestinian American community, and so many others are outraged and hearty, saying to yourselves, here we go again with Islamophobia and distrust we saw after 9-11. Just last week, a mother was brutally stabbed. A little boy here in the United States, a little boy who just turned six years old was murdered in their home outside of Chicago. His name was Wadiha, Wadiha, a proud American, a proud Palestinian American family. We can't stand by and stand silent when this happens. We must, without equivocation, denounce anti-Semitism. We must also, without equivocation, denounce Islamophobia. And to all you hurting, those of you hurting, I want you to know I see you. You belong. And I want to say this to you. You renounce all both all uh, Islamophobia and, and anti-Semitism. Anything else this is you'd like us to renounce? You know, in moments like these, when fear and suspicion, anger and rage run hard, that we have to work harder than ever to hold on to the values that make us who we are. We're a nation of religious freedom, freedom of expression. We all have a right to debate and disagree without fear of being targeted in schools or workplaces or in our communities. <clears throat> I must renounce violence and vitriol. See each other not as enemies, but as, but as fellow Americans. When I was in Israel yesterday, I uh, said that when America experienced the hell of 9-11, we felt enraged as well. While we sought and got justice, we made mistakes. So I cautioned the government of Israel not to be blinded by rage. And here in America, let us not forget who we are. We reject all forms all forms of hate, whether against Muslim, Jews, or anyone. That's what great nations do, and we are a great nation. On Ukraine, I'm asking Congress to make sure we can continue to send Ukraine the weapons they need to defend themselves and their country without interruption, so Ukraine can stop Putin's brutality in Ukraine. They are succeeding. When Putin invaded Ukraine, he thought he would take Kyiv and all of Ukraine in a matter of days. Well, over a year later, Putin has failed, and he continues to fail. Kyiv still stands because of the bravery of the Ukrainian people. Ukraine has regained more than 50% of the territory Russian troops once occupied, backed by U.S.-led coalition of more than 50 countries around the world, all doing its part to support Kyiv. What would happen if we walked away? We are the essential nation. Meanwhile, Putin has turned to Iran and North Korea to buy attack drones and ammunition to terrorize Ukrainian cities and people. From the outset, I've said, I will not send American troops to fight in Ukraine. All Ukraine is asking for is help, for the weapons, munitions, the capacity, the capability to push invading Russian forces off their land, and the air defense system to shoot down Russian missiles before they destroy Ukrainian cities. Let me be clear about something. We send Ukrainian equipment sitting in our stockpiles. And when we use the money allocated by Congress, we use it to replenish our own stores, our own stockpiles with new equipment, equipment that, defe that defends America and is made in America. Patriot missiles for air defense batteries made in Arizona, artillery shells manufactured in 12 states across the country in Pennsylvania, Ohio, Texas and so much more. You know, just as in World War II, today patriotic American workers are building the arsenal of democracy and serving the cause of freedom. Let me close with this. Earlier this year, I boarded Air Force One for a secret flight to Poland. There I boarded a train with blacked out windows for a 10-hour ride each way to Kyiv to stand with the people of Ukraine ahead of the one-year anniversary their brave fight against Putin. And I'm told I was the first American to enter a war zone not controlled by the United States military since President Lincoln. With me was just a small group of security personnel and a few advisors. But when I exited that train and met Zelensky, President Zelensky, I didn't feel alone. I was bringing with me the idea of America, the promise of America to the people who are today fighting for the same things we fought for 250 years ago. Freedom, independence, self-determination. 
As I walked through Kyiv with President Zelensky, with air raid sirens sounding in the distance, I felt something I've always believed, more strongly than ever before. America is a beacon to the world. Still, still. Whereas my friend Madeleine Albright said, the indispensable nation. Tonight, there are innocent people all over the world who hope because of us, who believe in a better life because of us, who are desperate not to be forgotten by us and are waiting for us. But time is of the essence. I know we have our divisions at home. <clears throat> we have to get past them. We can't let petty, partisan, angry politics get in the way of our responsibilities as a great nation. We cannot and will not let terrorists like Hamas and tyrants like Putin win. I refuse to let that happen. In moments like these, we have to remind, we have to remember who we are. We are the United States of America. The United States of America. And there is nothing, nothing beyond our capacity if we do it together. My fellow Americans, thank you for your time. May God bless you all. And may God protect our troops. President Biden, a rare public address to the nation from the Oval Office at the White House, so making the case that he will ask Congress for a significant foreign aid package, $100 billion to help support Israel. Mayor, you are lying. Well, I mean, uh, can, we, can we please put an Anderson uh, Cooper off before he attacks America? Oh, my goodness. Was that Russian television? The communi that was the communist the news network. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Well, it was an interesting address about Ukraine. Uh, we, uh, he wants more money for Ukraine. Uh, the official amount that he's given Ukraine is seventy-six billion. I believe it's over a hundred billion. But I would like you. To, I'd like to emphasize the fact that he has done it and never agreed to provide an auditor for the money. Uh, and I would say this time, no way, no how, no money uh, to uh, Ukraine unless they account for it. Because there's something strange about the fact that we've given them $76 billion and they, they apparently don't have enough arms. Uh, now, I, I thought actually when we gave them arms and stuff like that, that it'd be safer than giving them money because money in the hands of, you know, the Ukrainian politicians, you know what happens to it. Uh, and, and don't fool yourself. During time of war, that's when you can make the most money. So I thought, well, if they gave them just armaments, but it turns out that they've been illegally selling them. Uh, Zelensky has prosecuted a couple of low-level guys, but you know it's the oligarchs who are doing that. And he ain't touching them because his patron is one of the chief oligarchs. Kolomoisky in Ukraine. So I'm, I'm very offended that, that they had to, that he had to put together Israel and uh, Ukraine. Israel is entitled to be uh, considered on its own merits. Uh, the uh, Ukraine wasn't uh, combined with something else. He just gave them, just gave them money without any consideration of the fact that it's the second most dishonest, corrupt country in the world. And that's true at time of war or not. In fact, in time of war is when a lot of these guys made their big money. So um, that doesn't mean you don't help the Ukrainian people. But without uh, considering that, you're not helping the Iranian people very much. You're not helping the Ukrainian people at all if you're letting that money go to the top. Because, uh, well, some percentage of that will get to the bottom. And apparently the same thing is true with arms, although I imagine that is a little harder. Um, I don't know what to make of this address. You would think he would be uh, devoting this to getting the world around to understanding uh, the plight of uh, our, our, our best ally, or one of our best allies, along with, let's say, the UK, uh, Israel. Think they were entitled to, you know, singular treatment, particularly in a world that is so prejudiced against them. Uh, and I, don't, I, I mean, prejudiced against them as a people, Jewish people, and prejudiced against them as a, uh, as a, as a state. I mean, until now, basically the European Union is anti-Zionist, anti right? They would say. 
uh, a lot of Africa, a lot of Asia, uh, Russia, China. The UN, they get voted. Sometimes the only country that votes for them is us. So this was a great opportunity missed for the president of the United States to explain to the people of the United States and the people of the world what happened to Israel. You know it hasn't been presented uh, in Europe, in Asia, in Africa fairly. It's been presented through the lens of Hamas, but presented through the lens of Islamic extremism. It's been presented through the lens of anti-American, anti-Israeli, fierce prejudice. Uh, the, the whole juxtaposition of Israel and the Palestinian Authority, which began with Bill Clinton or possibly Jim Baker, is the reason we're in the position that we're in. The moral equivalency that he set up with a, with a guy who murdered 27 Americans, Arafat, between the Palestinian Authority, a, 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 a country run by terrorists, murderers, and crooks, and Israel, which is a, a country run by elected officials uh, with a rule of law, imperfect, probably no more imperfect than we are, and a he heck of a lot better than just about any other country, certainly the best one in that region, to set up a moral equivalency before, uh, with them. I remember when Rabin shook hands with Arafat for the first time, you could see he didn't want to do it. You could, I knew Rabin. In fact, he invited me to Israel about two months after I was mayor, and I told him I would come because I had so much respect for him, and I did go, and I went to his funeral. Very sad that we lost him because I thought of him as someone who could give me very, very good advice. But I went to the funeral of uh, uh, of, of Prime Minister Rabin. Um, and then, of course, I've been in Israel many, many times. But if I were president, that address would be about Israel and Israel alone. And it would be an attempt to change the prejudice. Uh, Ukraine doesn't need that. Uh, Europe, you know... Um, at least in terms of verbal uh, support, is falling all over itself to support Ukraine. Uh, now, do they give them the money that they really need? I don't know. Do they give them the support they really need? I don't know. Uh, the reality is they, do, they really do complain that we don't give them the support they need. It seems to me in terms of money, we do. But I, it does look like we don't give them the arms that they would need to win. And this is not just my criticism. This is a criticism from the left, right? Uh, I don't think there's any doubt that uh, Obama has, uh, Obama, huh? Biden hasn't given them uh, the, 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 the weapons that they need to, to drive uh, Russia out, which leaves a very perplexing question. What is he doing? Uh, he's, what he's doing is, it seems, is funding an endless war. There doesn't seem to be an end game that's a, that's achievable in Ukraine. Uh, Zelensky talks a good game about going in there and separating them, and they tried that for two months, and they got about this much of a separation <laughs> and lost a lot of people doing it. And no reason to laugh. I mean, it's a shame that I did that because it's a tragedy. But um, I don't think anybody would dispute the fact that Biden does not give them enough to win and was very late in supporting them to start with, although verbally he supports them very strongly. And in terms of money, he gives them incredible amounts of money without string, any strings attached. And to do that with a country that is the second most corrupt in the world is completely irresponsible to the people of that country. And here he uses this address to try to sell Ukraine because he knows that Ukraine is not very popular any longer. The American people are having problems about an endless war. Uh, Israel is different. Israel just started. Israel is still shocking. Israel just withstood a, a tremendous propaganda hit with the attack on the hospital, uh, uh, which, of course, you can see, you can see that... Um, the American press and the and the world press was ready to whack the hell out of Israel with no evidence, which is why this speech should have been to sell Israel. 
should have started off with. Look what they just tried to do to Israel. They tried to falsely attribute a bombing of a hospital to Israel. And he should do what we're going to do. He should show you the New York Times and what they did, the propaganda rag that has a history of turning down Jewish people when they were trying to flee the Nazis, which is a hell of a history that, that I'm sure they're I'd like to forget, just like the Democrat Party, I'd like to forget that the party is slavery, except it's starting to act like it again. So let's talk about the hospital for a minute. <laughs> you remember when we all started, Mike walked in, remember Mike, you walked in with the uh, with the uh, Al Jazeera. That's, that's right, It man. was really good that you got that because it's no longer there anymore. Oh, I have it up, many copies on my phone. Okay, want to see so they, it. Don't they worry. changed that. Yes, they, yes. Al Jazeera must have some very good people, engineers. They had it right, right from the beginning. <clears throat> right from the very beginning, they said it was an errant uh, uh, Islamic uh, uh, missile that hit it. Um, and um, so they must have had inside information, or they may have heard the, the, the tape that we've now heard. By the next day, it was uh, Israel did it. Um, the New York Times was the best of all. But let's take a look again at that. Um, can we? Video? I, actually, if you want to look over here, there's a picture of it. There's a picture right there. That's the one that they believe <coughs> was the errant. Uh, uh, um, that was that was the errant breakaway. Well, Mayor, and it also turned out to be it didn't even hit the, the camera. It didn't even actually hit the hospital. It Is hit. Yeah. It hit the par, It hit the parking lot of the hospital. Well, we, we didn't know that then, but right. that's true. Right. So let's take right. it a step at a time. Yes. And not get ahead of ourselves. So that one. Uh, uh, see if you can get the film out. Yes. So we can go to the film. Because then... Do we have the film? If we don't, I don't want to take delay. So why don't we go to what I have up there right now? More mayor, up and down, north and south. Yep, like that. Yes, sir. Okay. Do we yeah. have it now? That's it. All right. This is very important because this is the aftermath of the attack, which will tell you what the attack was. I want you to notice, uh, although we're going to show you even more of it, that uh, the hospital still exists. There's the hospital in that corner. Yep. There it is right there. The hospital complex is all over here. The, the breakaways, uh, the, the uh, breakaways from the rocket that hit here, hit these cars. You can see the cars that are burnt. Yep. You can see there's no destruction of the building. So uh, there is no doubt now from much better video than this uh, that also uh, incorrect and false was that it was a strike on the hospital. It was not. It hit the parking lot of the hospital and if you look at the official report, if it's an official report, it was in BBC, uh, very little of the hospital was even damaged, according to, um, according to the report of the reporters from BBC. And then also, uh, eventually, uh, just about ev er every, uh, everyone else. Um, May we have the video for you, if you'd like. Okay. Yeah. Now, this is being attributed to the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, Jihad, which is the second largest uh, armed group in Gaza. It has a thousand active members, but a lot of those who are inactive. It was founded in 1979 in the Gaza Strip to fight Israeli occupation. Its Secretary General is Zia al Nakala, whom the US State Department uh, lists as a global terrorist. And uh, it has a joint operations room with, uh, with Hamas and even some of the other independent terrorists, uh, although it does often act on its own. And it is completely against uh, peace talks with the Israeli state, as well as dedicated firmly to the destruction and elimination of the 
Jewish state and the Jewish people. Nice group, huh? And they are the group uh, this is attributed to. Now, it could be that Hamas did that right at the very beginning. Although, if you listen to the uh, if you listen to the audio tape that we're going to play later, it sounds pretty spontaneous that they said the Palestinian uh, uh, Islamic Jihad. So let's look at the let's look at the first uh, the first shot. Mm-hmm. Well, so we're going to play we're going to play the first video here, Mayor, and then and then as people watch this, soon we're also going to play a video once uh, daylight broke. To okay. Show the results. ونحن نشير إلى أن هذه المدينة هي الأكثر تعرضا للصواريخ منذ بداية هذه الحرب عمدة المدينة كانت تحدث قبل أيام عن أكثر من ألف صاروخ طال هذه المدينة وأكثر من 170 صاروخا سقط بالفعل في داخلها وأحدث دمارا في البنى التحتية وفي السيارات وفي المباني العامة والخاصة شكرا جزيلا لك ليس كرم حتى اللحظة وسنعود إليك في إطار هذه التغطية التي ستتابعها معكم سلم الجمال إليك سلم شكرا ازدهار well, I'm sorry we didn't uh, translate that uh, for uh, for you. I mean, I couldn't translate, but we have one. And uh, basically, uh, that was the original one that was uh, obtained by Mike here. And um, right from the very beginning, uh, they assumed it was it was some kind of a uh, not necessarily a complete rocket, but but some kind of breakaway from it. Uh, it was some, something went wrong, uh, and then there were two explosions, a little one and a bigger one. Uh, and then when you examine uh, the, uh, I call it the crime scene yeah. because I'm used to crime scene. Uh, it has small craters, which would indicate it wasn't a big bomb. That it wasn't, uh, the Israelis would hit him with a bomb. Should we show the video? And there'd be one hell of a crater there. Believe me, be- if they wanted to take out that hospital, they would have hit it with a rocket and there'd be a big hole in the ground. Go ahead. Play, play, play that. خرجنا فكانت المفاجاه الصادمه للجميع ان المستشفى ممتلئ well, I mean, that, well, first of all, that guy is just a complete liar. He probably was supplied by Hamas. You can see clearly. I, I'm sorry you couldn't hear me during during the. Uh, I could narrate it for you, but uh, the thing to look for there is the hospital is intact. You see it in back of you. We, we don't have the time. We played them last night, but there are any number of uh, videos of people being taken care of in that hospital within seconds of the, of, of the blast and being taken care of uh, very effectively. Some were taken to other hospitals, but that was triage. That hospital was actually functioning and didn't stop functioning. And uh, look again. Can they hear me now? Yeah. If you looked at that, you can see it was an attack on the cars. <laughs> the cars are all shriveled up and, and bombed uh, and um, I don't see a dead body there, but there were dead people. This led, led us last night, it led Ted and I last night to the conclusion that the number of dead is exaggerated and false. And now we learn today that the U.S. estimate, which was reduced yesterday to 300, is now down to 100 to 200 and probably at the shorter end. I heard 50 today, Mayor. I wouldn't be surprised if they just lied completely, which actually leads me to, I think the real question is no longer was it an Israeli bomb. It wasn't a bomb at all. Otherwise, that hospital would be gone. Uh, No hospital, there was a bomb. Or if it hit hit the parking lot, there'd be a crater in the ground, you know, 10, 12, 13, 15, 20 feet deep. I mean, really... And well, may also with airstrikes, an airstrike it targets one building, but the 
collateral damage, you would see multiple buildings. Well, that, that building adapts. would have collapsed. That, yeah. Exactly. So this yeah, is well, all there's the condition good. of the of the of the hospital. Now, if that were a bomb, that would not be that that, that let's say hit off target, but close because that's pretty close. There'd be a lot more damage to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And as the report said, right away when it was examined, very little damage to the hospital. Now, here's here's the real question. The whole question of whether it was an Israeli strike or not is completely resolved. Un unfortunately, not uh, from the point of view of world opinion. And Biden did very little tonight to, to change that, except to say that he believes the Israelis didn't do it, but it was like a throwaway sentence. So world opinion is the Israelis did it. Completely orchestrated by, uh, by the terrorist Hamas, and the terrorist loving international press. Well, Mayor, it doesn't because help. they have they have now perpetrated a complete false falsity like Russian collusion. Reminds me very, very much of what the Democrats do. Russian collusion or uh, uh, Russian disinformation about the hard drive or and all of their sycophants, uh, com communist sympathizers or communists or haters of America join them. And it is now beyond any doubt clear that it wasn't Israel. Now the question is, was it an accident created by uh, the Palestinian jihad, uh, pa the uh, it, Hamas? No, no, no. The 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 uh, the group that did it the Islamic jihad. is the is the Islamic Palestinian jihad. I see the name Islamic yeah. Palestinian jihad. Theoretically, a thousand members separate from Hamas works with Hamas, but does things on their own. Now, are they the fall guy? <coughs> I mean, I don't know. They got to identify who those two gentlemen were on the well, tape. Well, those two gentlemen could have yeah. been could have been doing a scripted conversation. That's also true. That's this also is, I true. mean, this is an enormously wily, smart enemy. Look what they pulled off against Israel, a completely surprise attack. And this is the best thing that could ever happen to them. And remember, discount the fact that they care about the ch the ch uh, the children. They don't give a damn about the children. So we'll take a break, and we will be right back. Some of the Towers Foundation delivers on its promise to do good and never forget the sacrifices America's greatest heroes have made for us. Heroes who risked their lives to keep our communities and our country safe. Heroes like United States Marine Corps Captain and Pilot John Jeremy Sachs. Captain Sachs sustained fatal injuries when his military aircraft crashed during training, killing him and five other service members. He's remembered by loved ones as courageous, brilliant, and devoted to his career, family, and friends. John is survived by his wife, Amber, who gave birth to their second daughter three months after his death. Tunnels and Towers paid the mortgage on the family home for Amber and their two daughters. The foundation has helped over 1,000 military and first responder families navigate the worst of times by removing the burden of a mortgage payment. Our nation's heroes and their families need your help now more than ever. Donate $11 a month to Tunnel to Towers at T2T.org. T2T.org. That's T, the number two T.org. T2T.org. Please donate now. So here are the two possibilities. Welcome back uh, to uh, America's Mayor Live, but I'm so anxious to get into it. Here, here are the really de uh, debatable possibilities here. This was a, uh, a mistake made by uh, the jihad, or this was a setup in order to, uh, in order to bring uh, everybody around to the Hamas cause because they had suffered some erosion based on the fact that they were chopping babies' heads off uh, and uh, raping women. And it was uh, not uh, disputable because there were pi pictures of it. Um, and uh, although the, the, the really true believers in terrorism, like uh, the, the squad, Tlaib, but it st stick, uh, stuck with them through that, 
there were large elements of Europe that for once were siding with Europe, uh, with, with, with Israel. Well, I mean, if, if this didn't happen, they would want to make it happen. Well, does that give you a, 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 a doubt as to whether or not this was an accident by a fellow a terrorist group? So, Mayor, uh, speaking of Europe, 2,000 actors and actresses from the UK today signed a petition, quote unquote, condemning Israel's genocide of, of Palestine. And the number may get down to below 100. <laughs> I, I mean, that's some genocide. And it wasn't Israel. Right. So and there, Israel, yeah. I mean, the, the reason I, I uh, from the moment you walked in and you said that uh, Al Jazeera had actually raised a possibility that it was a, that it was a errant missile. Of course it was. They wouldn't do that in a million years unless it was. And I think they thought it was completely provable. So now do we have what 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 do we um, what do we have left to show them? Uh, we do want to show them. We do want to we do want to play the audio for them, don't we? Yep. Uh, yeah. Because I think this is this is this is dispositive that it isn't Israel, but it's not dispositive that it isn't Hamas, despite what these people are saying. Remember, these people are professional liars. Some that will some that will be shared here of communication between terrorists talking about rockets misfiring. The terrorists realize that the rocket has misfired and made specific reference to the Al Hali Al Madani hospital. I would want to let everybody hear the conversation. I, I will do uh, the translation in English. I'm telling you. This is the first time that we see missile like this falling, and so that's why we are saying it belongs to the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. What? They are saying it belongs to the PGI. It's from us? It looks like it. Who says this? They are saying the, the sharp nail from the missile is local sharp nail, and not like Israeli sharp nail. What are you saying, Abu Amar? But God bless. It couldn't have been found another place, not the hospital, to explode? Never mind, yes, Abu Aji. They shot it from the cemetery behind the hospital. What? They shot it coming from the cemetery behind the Mahadani hospital, and it misfired and fell on them. There's a cemetery behind it? Yes, El Mahadani is exactly in the compound. Where is it when, the, in, when, when you enter the compound? You first enter the compound and don't go towards the city. It's on the right side of El Maadani Hospital. Yes, I know it. Well, this is about the tenth time or maybe eighth time that I've listened to this in different forms with him translating, watching it with the translation below. Uh, last night we had a different translation of it. Uh, and I, I am now pretty close to convinced it's a setup. Awful lot of information for that short period of time. Unless these guys are like geniuses. They knew exactly where it came from. They knew exactly what kind of missile it was. They knew it came from the cemetery. We'd really have to know exactly when did that conversation take place with regard to the strike. And if that was within an hour of it, even a half, let's say a half hour to an hour of it, they couldn't have gathered all that information in that time unless the Palestinian uh, jihad was uh, uh, supplied it to them. Uh, and why would they why would they supply it to them? Uh, this was a mistake. It wasn't it wasn't uh, nobody was preparing to announce this wherever that rocket was originally headed. Theoretically, it wasn't the hospital. Aha. But maybe it was. So here's my possibility. Too scripted a conversation to be real. That is, that's the, that's the uh, story that Hamas created originally. They conveniently have uh, the, the uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, uh, P, P I J. They, they have it as a fall guy. It's not Hamas, it's this other group. They were sloppy. That's the, what the finding is going to be. They're going to keep saying it's Israel, but the responsible people in the world are going to say it's the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, uh, as opposed to who it really was. That was, that was done by Hamas. 
Uh, they had all those numbers. How do they have all those numbers that turn out to be totally incorrect? They, it, they had press releases going out to the world press. Uh, immediately, the Gaza Health Ministry said, breaking, the Gaza Health Ministry says at least 500 people killed in an explosion at a hospital. Well, there wasn't an explosion in the hospital. There weren't 500 people killed. But how did they come up with that? Where, where did that come from? In an explosion at a hospital that it says was caused by an Israeli airstrike. This, this, this was too hell to them not to have been done by them. And if there'd be only one thing that would stop them from doing it, and that would be some respect for the lives of their own people, which they don't have. I mean, these are the same people that right up to that day were telling them not to leave, that people should not leave from the strike zones. Because uh, unlike the Israelis, they, they want the maximum number of civilians killed. The bigger the civilian number, the better for them, the more money they're going to get. So I would say that this is a very uh, typical terrorist uh, setup, uh, maybe even orchestrated and taught to them by Iran. Bingo. Mayor, and that's, what I, that's where I wanted to go with this. Who's running this? Iran's Just like home. Obama runs uh, Biden, the Ayatollah and Raisi run Hezbollah and, and uh, Hamas. They're not going to make a move without them. I mean, because they're finished if they don't have them. If Iran walks out on them, they, they fit, uh, Israel will take them out in a day. How, I mean, how, who did this benefit? Look, right, Mayor, I mean, as soon as it happened, a, the a, entire a, Arab world. In, a, in an honest world, in a non-corrupt world, in a world that uh, once again had people that uh, believed in God and morality, it, it would destroy Hamas to have done this, and particularly to have pu tried to pull off this uh, this uh, uh, phony story. But in the crooked uh, world that we live in, the corrupt world that we live in, dominated by uh, the evil press, which is what they are, this this uh, becomes very helpful to them. They knew. They knew that if they said it and they would, the whole world of these uh, left wing people would believe the murderous terrorists, not the Israelis and the Americans. Well, Mayor, uh, Joe Biden decided to take our money today and give Palestine $100 million for aid. But um, it doesn't look like they need money because they have pl plenty of rockets to fire at Israel. So um, I'm very confused what that $100 million is going for to. Can you, do you, do you, would you well, know? They've already, they, they actually just got caught stealing money from the humanitarian fund. Hamas feeds off that fund forever. I mean, anybody that thinks that that money from the UN, which is mostly us, goes to the people of Palestine, take a look at how poor the people of Palestine are and take a look at how rich the leaders are. And now you'll get it, you'll get an idea. Also, if, if, if the people of Palestine were using the money we've been giving them since uh, since uh, Arafat uh, bamboozled Clinton, they, it, it would be the French Riviera. <laughs> they got enough money to build the French Riviera. In fact, they did. I mean, Mrs. Arafat lives on the French Riviera <laughs> with our money and their money. How ridiculous. But, Mayor, the, the president warned Hamas not to divert or steal this assistance. Wouldn't that be enough to all oh, Hamas? Listen? Sure, just like it stopped Putin from going into Ukraine. Or uh, just like it stopped them from invading in the first place. Did you just the say Joe Biden on that press conference? Do you think you would listen to that man? And, just, and <laughs> here's, a guy, here's a guy that seems perfectly all right that he got stood up by a boss and by, uh, and, and we give a boss a fortune. If he, if he stood me up, he wouldn't get any money anymore. I bet if he stood Trump up, <laughs> Trump would sue him. Can you, would they have pulled that on Trump? The, Joe Biden goes over there. Everybody cancels on yeah, him except for good. Bibi. Oh, no, no, right. I, know, I, I know Trump's reaction to me. I can tell you Trump's reaction. I'll tell you right, right off. I'll tell you his reaction. Trump would say, oh, I'm glad he didn't come. I can now save money. Uh, cancel the money for uh, the Palestinian Authority. Well, first of all, we wouldn't be giving him any money, come to think of it. Biden restored the money for the Palestinian Authority because Biden is an integral part of the phony NGO network. You have to understand how international corruption works. We say we give money to these uh, humanitarian organizations, which makes them sound pure. 
Many, many of these left-wing organizations are complete, corrupt, more like organized crime structures, like all the Soros is. Yep. This is how uh, Ukraine steals money. There's five, there's $5 billion in foreign aid unaccounted for by Ukraine, which the Ukrainian government began investigating, and it all went back to charitable organizations that stole it, like the Clinton Foundation. That's, that's what the Clintons based it on. They know that these NGOs are complete thieves, or many of them are, not all, and the ones used in this network are complete thieves. So you give it to the NGOs and the NGOs kick it back to everybody. But there's no way in a place like Ukraine or a place like uh, the Palestinian Authority, this kind of cash is going to be floating around and the organized criminals and crooks aren't going to take it. I mean, you're absurdly naive if you think that's the case, which is why uh, Trump, who is not naive, cut it off. And, and why, well, Jerky didn't do it because he's naive. He did it because he's corrupt. Well, Mayor, I have a question for all these Palestinian Americans that live here. If, if, you, if you love your country so much and you're so concerned what happened there, why, why did you come to America? Why don't you go back to Palestine? Well, didn't uh, Numskull say that most Palestinians don't support Hamas? Uh, I mean, that's what didn't he, he said. Yeah. But, well, who yeah. elected them? Who elected them? Uh, the, uh, the Martians? I think they won with an 80% vote, Hamas. Uh, even if you take even, yeah. even if you take the ridiculous left-wing poll polls that say that they only about 60% uh you know want war or support Hamas. That's a lot bigger number than he has. True. Well, a lot bigger number than Trump has. Yeah. That's a hell of a lot of support. Uh, that's enough to constitute support. I mean, that's what Hitler had. Hitler had Hitler got elected by a plurality of the German people. That's what a democracy is about. Now, here's the real issue and why and why these people are so damn dangerous, including Nikki Haley, who buys into this, which is sickening. Of course, not all the Palestinian people are Hamas and not every single one of them supports Hamas. But I would like to know the number that supports the destruction of the state of Israel. The ones here destroy uh, uh, they're demonstrating in the street for the destruction of the state of Israel. You don't think the people in Palestine support want the, Israel, the Israelis gone? And not only that, they want them wiped out, killed. These are a very violent group of people. These are not products of, excuse me, Western civilization. Well, May, I think their goal that in, that on October 7, when they invaded Israel, I think Hamas's goal was to just destroy bloodlines of Israelis. So they well, did you hear them? Did you hear them chanting uh, from sea to sea? Let's let's drive from sea to sea. Uh, Palestine will be free from river to the sea or whatever. Yeah. They're saying yeah. Is, I uh, mean, that's right. Uh, that's that's uh, basically saying I mean, you go in both directions. You go east, west and west, east. You go from Golan Heights to the sea and you wipe out Tel Aviv. That's a call on. Right, right, you go, call you, on. go right. you go, you go, you right. go, you go from Gaza to the river. And you wipe out, um, you wipe out Jerusalem. You wipe out Nazareth. Well, they already have Nazareth, which is a, a travesty. How how America agreed to give them the home where Jesus was born is sick is absolutely sickening. And what they did to that church is sickening. And how any Christian uh, uh, has any uh, empathy with them at all and doesn't realize what uh, horrible people they are. And again. The ordinary Palestinian is not the problem, maybe. So let's say that half the people there support Hamas and half don't. And we decide we're going to let people from Gaza come in. How do we know which half we got? We don't. What are they going to tell us? You're, 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 a, you're a Hamas guy, a, a Hamas supporter, but you want to get away and you want to come to America. And I say... Do you support Hamas? What do you say? I say no. Yeah, and of course I say, okay, well, maybe, go, go maybe, we'll let everybody in. The board is wide open, so Hamas so the, supporters so, are already here. They're okay. here. So They're we here. got a 50% yeah. chance. Yeah. <laughs> They're here already. So if, if 10 people <laughs> come here, if you let 10 uh, yeah. Palestinians yeah. in, yeah. five will be supporters of one of the worst terrorist mm -hmm. groups, or possibly even a member yeah. of one of the worst terrorist groups in the world. Yeah, yeah, on, on a, <laughs> we, we're, we're, we're working at I mean, uh, 50%. Yeah. 
Ma- Mayor, let, let let the facts. And and then I'm gonna I'm gonna guarantee you that four out of the next five uh, would celebrate with a great celebration if there was a de- destruction of the state of Israel or maybe even of the United States of America. Mayor, let the facts speak speak for itself and his listeners. I just want to let you know that. Um, the anti-Semitic attacks in this city since October 7th are up 400%, okay? Gothamist, a piece This of- is much, much worse than what was feared after September 11 because I even feared it. If you listen to my... Uh, 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 if you listen to my press conferences on September 11, I had a lot to worry about and think about and know find my people of. And boy, I, nobody scripted it for me and nobody wrote it out for me like Dodo. Uh, this came from me, from my brain, my heart, and my four or five best advisors who are, you know, 40 IQ points above his advisors and patriots. They're people who love America rather than hate America. He has, he's surrounded by people who hate this country. I went out of my way and took time from that to say, I don't want to see anyone who looks Arab or Islamic, I don't want to see him attacked here in this city. This city doesn't do that. Uh, we're not going to become what we're fighting, these Islamic extremists. And we can make a distinction between Islamic extremists and Islamic. And if we can't do that, we're not really Americans. And, uh, and then I put together a small task force, but a large ComStat group, because I was ready to increase it if I needed to. And for the first... Four or five weeks, every day I tracked attacks on, on, uh, on Arabs. It would be part of our meeting, and Governor Pataki will, will tell you this, be part of our meeting every morning, the police department, because they, I, this is what I would do with other crimes. If I was tracking a crime and I wanted to reduce it, they reported to me every day. And sometimes in the middle of the day, if they didn't do something I liked, I would call up. And that's why my police commissioners weren't in love with me, because I was a micromanager. But I'm sorry, all my three police commissioners, I knew more about law enforcement than you did. I had more experience. I mean, that's just the truth. I, I, I was at the highest level of the Justice Department. I ran uh, the, the, the Bureau of Prisons, the Immigration Service, the Drug Enforcement Administration. I was at the lowest level of the Justice Department. I prosecuted cases in court. Prosecuted as a regular prosecutor, not U.S. attorney with the big famous ones. Uh, Work with the NAP Commission, work with the police department, came from a family of police officers. So maybe they knew as much as I did. I actually academically knew a lot more than they did because I also work with the, with the uh, violent crime uh, task force with Professor Wilson, who taught me, a, uh, that's, uh, people say, oh, Bratton invented, uh, uh, invented uh, broken windows theory. Professor Wilson invented the bro- broken window, and I knew it 10 years before I met Bratton. And it's in the Attorney General's uh, Task Force on Violent Crime, which I helped to edit. So the reality is that th- th- this, this, this idea of letting Gaza or Palestinians into America is as insane as everything else he's doing without border. And he's insane. His policy at the border, the policy of this administration at the border is so reckless with regard to your safety that the man should be removed from office and impeached just for that. Forget the the, uh, 50 million that he stole. He should be thrown out for that. Everybody around him. I mean, Mayorkas tells you it's a secure border. They've had like two and a half years to bring anybody in here, Mike, they want to. They already have him here. So, Mayor, while we're on the uh, while we're talking about the law today, there was a pro-Palestinian basically insurrection into the Capitol building. I don't know if you were aware. So are those people going to get the same penalties as the January 6th people? They were they were fighting with Capitol police officers. They were putting uh, our congressmen and senators in danger. So what, what what's the difference between what happened today and on January 6th? Uh, we we don't have a. Uh... We don't have justice, a system of justice in this country. That's right, Cash Patel. They are, they are, that. they are part of the, they are part of uh, the group. They want to uh, rule America, and therefore they don't. They are not held responsible for anything, uh, even the biggest and uh, largest bribes and treasonous acts. I'm not sure they're not held responsible for murder. 
Look, look at what they did to Ashley Babbitt. I mean, you want to tell me you're uh, shocked about January 6th. Then you want to just step back and get out of all the damn politics. What's the worst consequence of January 6th now that we're looking back on it? Ashley the murder of Ashley Babbitt. Nobody else was murdered. Well, the, the media try to portray that police officers were murdered. But, but they weren't. That they, was a phone. That was as phony. That was that, as phony exactly. as what Hamas does. Exactly. Because there isn't too much difference, right. I guess. Right. Bingo. That's such a in terms of point. in terms of the way in which they manipulate new uh, news information and lie. Uh, I'm not talking about that. I don't. I do not believe that the news media will kill babies. Let's put it that way. Right. No, I'm not. I'm not. About- I'm. But I do believe that Hamas knows. They can put out this bullshit and it'll be propaganda. Yeah. It, it, no Democrat matter what Party. Israel says, no matter what Israel proves, if Hamas says it was Israel who did it and we got those guys on tape making it clear they did not and we can pr- trace the rocket and we can show all of this forensic proof. This will be Israel killed the babies because they had to get Israel killing the babies because they kill so many babies. That's right, Mayor. They're the ones that literally and took ownership of killing innocent people. And this is the same political, quote unquote, political party, Hamas, who when they ran for office, Mayor, back in 2005, 2006, I've seen the videos. These members, these candidates, some of them got elected. They openly justified killing civilians. And they were on video saying that's justifiable and they'd find these crazy ways to justify it. Yeah. Well, how that man can go to Israel and say that he's a friend of Israel and have uh, engineered all this money to Iran that is dedicated 24 hours a day to the destruction of the state of Israel and the elimination of the Jewish people. This is like giving Hitler money. This is like giving Hitler money and claiming that you're a friend of the Jewish people. And, and Mayor, he, he was the vice president to Obama, who actually was the worst relations with Israel pretty much ever. And, get, and Obama, Obama gave him cash that was even easier to give it to the terrorists. Cash on a plane. Yeah. Very nice. and, and which, crates which, of cash. Crates of cash. Which he hid. That's right. He, he got caught doing it. He didn't, he didn't go tell us he was doing it. What the hell was he hiding it for? Because it was going to, I mean, you got to be an idiot not to realize he's hiding it because it was going to Hezbollah, Hamas, and the other uh, Islamic terrorist groups. That's why. And they, they take cash. It meant that, uh, <laughs> it meant that the reign of terror didn't have to go to the bank mm-hmm. and cash the check. Much easier to hand it out to, to uh, I mean, if, if it was for, um, to help uh, the Ministry of Children, you wouldn't need it in cash. No, they were perfectly okay with a wire. There, and mayor, yeah. mayor, there are pictures of uh, Hamas operatives with American weapons, and they're trying to. A lot of people are saying that they probably bought them from Ukraine. No, how about they bought them from Ukraine, or, or they bought them from the Taliban? That also, the that's Taliban. True. Taliban, yeah. Taliban. There were reports. There were reports four or five months ago that we we, we covered saying that the Taliban is like the third largest arms dealer in the world. How did that happen? $85 billion worth of American arms. Now, what nut does that? Joe Biden. What kind of a nut does that? <laughs> Mayor, oh. <laughs> Mayor 23,000 Humvees. Yeah. yeah. Left but who does that? Thousand. Who does it? Right. You can't make that up. I don't. It doesn't even fit his being Humvees. demented or his being crooked. He didn't get any money for it. Maybe he did. Maybe he, he got money for it. He his whole administration to agree to it, right? I mean, or too afraid to... I mean, Milley apparently opposed it. But Milley is worth nothing. I mean, he was going to sell out the United States to China. I mean, Milley is worth like nothing. A, a, a general that lets him give to a terrorist group $85 billion worth of arms and doesn't say... A, and he's a lot bigger than Biden. And doesn't say a damn thing. Isn't worth being a general. Yeah. Or how about giving up Bagram Air Base, four hundred miles from China? Right, it would have been nice to have it now. Right? You, you can't make this up. I'm no army general, mayor. Is that because they're communists? If when yes. you when you leave a country, right. I feel like you're supposed to take your equipment, your your military, and well, leave you it, want- and leave it empty. <laughs> Not with the military. I would think if you just watch war movies, right, you, right. you know, you know, you burn it. Or you blow it up. You burn it. Yeah. If you can't take it with you, you that's destroy right. it. That's what they did on the. Uh, that's the what Miami. they did in the. That's what they did in the embassy in uh, in uh, Iran when we left. We burned all the papers and we burned all the 
Mm -hmm. You burn it. You get rid of it. Mm -hmm. You don't leave it there for the. And remember, we weren't just leaving a country. We were leaving a country where the fear was it was going to be taken over by four massive Islamic terrorist groups. Uh, Biden stupidly thought that they could be held off for a year. Already that had crashed in. That already crashed in. Oh, any trust. So he so he was leaving it there with full knowledge that the Taliban was taken over. They were already they were already in the cities taking over. And he trusted them with our security. They were literally walking around with military with a US military soldiers. To so now if security. they got $85 billion worth of arms. The region is saturated with terrorists. I got a good idea. Let's leave them with weapons. Let's leave 75,000 vehicles. Could I don't he, even know where. 50, wait. 25,000 of these. But could he have gotten, but, but, no, but, but could he have gotten money for it? Yeah, but that's what he was in the business of, right? At the very least, tell Wait, and then when, to pay the up. best part is when they when we <laughs> left, they had a parade to show yeah. that we left all our equipment. Two hundred airplanes. <laughs> they had a parade. Two hundred airplanes. I don't believe this. Taliban I don't had care a parade. How good these sources are. They had, they had a just, parade. It's hard to fathom there. Yeah. Hundreds of. So airplanes there was a poll today where he's if you put Kennedy in the race, he wins. Uh -oh. oh boy. Uh oh. Can you believe this? Stop. What's wrong? What I. Uh, and I'm going to assume, I'm going to tell you why I think that poll was wrong. But it does mean that there's some substantial number of people, whether he's ahead or he is, support him. Are they crazy? Are they crazy? I mean, don't vote then. If you think, I mean, there's, there's no way in the world that Trump or any Republican is as bad as that. No, I mean, there's no one I know of in the history of America that would have given up $85 billion worth of arms to a terrorist group or given up an air base 400 miles from our biggest enemy. There's nobody in the world. There's nobody in the Republican Party that would do that. No, 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 nobody. I mean, we could uh, you could take go, go, go just pick one. Obama wouldn't do it. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Mm. I think Obama would agree to it. it How do you like that? I think Obama may have made the decision. You think uh, he makes decisions? No. Here, here, here's what they here. Here's what people say to me when I say that. They say, "Well, he's demented. He doesn't know what he's doing." Well, then somebody else is making the decision, and somebody else is irresponsible because the decisions aren't good decisions that are being made for him. The decisions are against the interests of the United States. In some cases, so much against the interests of the United States, it looks like they're being made by a traitor. And I mean, who could it be but Obama? Who else has given him instructions of that nature? Who else is telling him, leave the, oh, just leave it there for the Taliban? Tens of I mean, why wouldn't he? He gave a hundred, hundreds of millions to uh, 170 million as he left office. He gave it to the terrorists. He gave it to the reign of terror, Iran. Trump has been warning people about this since the beginning of time. You're still going to go vote for Biden, America? Really? Yeah, I, 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 you're going to create. Uh, oh, and by the way, just in case you need a little more support for this, uh, in uh, within the last eleven days, during all this stuff, four hundred and fifty rockets misfired and fell inside Gaza. Four hundred and fifty. So now think about this: some of that damage you see inside Gaza. That four hundred and fifty rockets is a lot. It's done to themselves. They're so they're so proficient, they blow themselves up. That's about a quarter of the rockets that leave. So this misfire, this is Israel or whoever did it, you know, supporting the idea that it was a misfire. I am beginning to believe, I'm, I, you know, I can't prove it, but if I were investigating this, like I used to, this would be my hypothesis that I'd be investigating. This was a setup. This was a setup job. Hamas set this up to get this news. They're not, they're not that lucky. And uh, and the the Palest the Pal the uh, it, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, <laughs> which I had really never heard of before. I knew there were other groups there, but I didn't know the name. It's a thousand people. It's not much of a group. Uh, is taking the fall for it. I'm sure they're getting plenty of money for doing it. And they're such a small group that it would be really hard to wipe, to go figure them out and wipe them out. And, and then Hamas, 
Hamas has it, has it worked out both ways. The world is going to believe their lie because the world is uh, corruptly in love with them and has been since Clinton uh, 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 started making love with Arafat. And uh, which, which was, the, just think of that, how disgusting that was. This guy killed 27 Americans as the president of the United States. He had to know that. I knew it because I investigated it. I saw, I saw, I saw the, the files. Americans. I'm not talking about the, the thousands of other people that he killed of all different nationalities. I mean, he was active with them when they were taking planes and knocking them out of the sky. I mean, don't think of Arafat in the latter days when he was negotiating and stealing money. Arafat was as much of a murderous uh, terrorist as any of these Hamas guys. Now, the second Arafat is money, 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 money. Well, I mean, it follows the tradition of Muhammad, which is, you know, you get three choices. You can become Muslim, right? You can give me money, plenty of money, or you go in the grave, boom, shoot you, put you in the grave. Like uh, the, the famous uh, uh, vineyard that he took over that was run by Jewish people. They had the best vineyard in the desert. He wanted it, came in and said, we want half of it. And they said, no. And he just lined up a whole group of them, killed them, and put them in a mass grave. I wonder where that came from. I mean, the, the grand mufti, mufti of Palestine had several very, very warm and cordial visits with Hitler. Yikes. So, I mean, what are we talking about? Uh, this, is, this is absurd. They took our land away from us. Palestine wasn't on the map. It wasn't on the map. They, they were wanderers, and a larger number of them lived in Jordan and Egypt than there. And they kept wandering. And then, and then when uh, this all started and they started killing people, including in Jordan, uh, the, the Jordan threw, threw out a million of them. And Egypt, I don't know if Egypt threw them out or killed them. But look what happened. Both places are now cut off to them. Biden claims that he got El Sisi to take some. I'll believe it when I see it. Well, probably three, four. <laughs> this is good. I mean, Islamic Jihad mayor, of course, is also. Uh, th there's no Iran. way that uh, that that it Biden is. can negotiate with Al Sisi and come out ahead. Oh my goodness, Al Sisi is whatever he is, but this is this is another very yeah. smart guy. It's like, okay, yeah, I'll take some. Shh. I wonder if you wait until at least. Jordan. How about we'll take whatever you want, Joe? Wait, wait until the dummy leaves. He, you know, he won't, he won't, he won't, well, first of all, he won't follow up. You know, no. all the more reason for Hamas to figuratively blow up those talks between Biden and these Arab countries, right? They probably knew, oh my goodness, Biden, they're going to, they're going to work that guy over. So by doing what they did, they stopped those meetings from happening. Let's well, not, let's not overlook that part, right? This well, hospital attack caused every Arab nation to tell Joe Biden, we ain't meeting with you. Can we can we take a look at the uh, two New York Times headlines? Yeah. I mean, I, I I don't know what I have to do to prove prove to you if you if you need it, you shouldn't subscribe to this piece of crap. So the first, these are the first three. So it even changed the night of you know well, the local time for us in America. Uh, here are three headlines. You know, uh, the uh, just the news that's fit to print, just the lies we want to print that's what it should be just the lies we want to print that that this is what that will demonstrate so the first one says israel strike kills 100 in hospital hundreds hundreds in hospitals palestinians day and at least 500 dead in strike on gaza hospitals at least 500 dead in blast see notice the little difference there one is a strike on the hospital, which mm -hmm. is not true, right? Hospital wasn't hit. Definitively, we know that. And it becomes now blast at. Yeah, I think right is the, is the first one. So at least, remember, so the, the big part is here, this is all the day of, few, within a few hours. Of no, I believe the first one is, 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 is to my left. Yeah, yeah, I, they, they juxtaposed. Okay, so, so the first one is, the, on the, is actually on the here, last here, one here. Here's how the here, here's how they change. 
strike kills than strike on Gaza hospital, yeah. which is not true. Yeah. Then they change it to uh, blast because now they're yeah. starting to get worried that it wasn't an actual rocket. But now, yep. Blast at because it was in the parking lot at Gaza hospital. I mean, this is just, this isn't like giving you the news. This is like uh, maneuvering lies. Yes, no, changing I, the script, updating no. the script for the episode. Now, Mayor. This is what terrorists do. Now, here's today's. That's why they get on. Then here's today's first sentence. What happened today? Hundreds of people were, hundreds. Notice the difference now. Hundreds, hundreds. We got down to hundreds now. Mm -hmm. at, remember where it started? Of at people were feared dead after an explosion. <laughs> At a hospital feared in the dead. Gaza. And, uh, you missed one. And feared dead. Not dead, right? Feared dead. There's three key... Within that first sentence, it went from at least 500 to hundreds. It went from dead to feared dead. But, they, but, they, don't, but they don't... But they don't... Explosion. But they don't mention the... Uh, they, they, they don't, they don't men mention the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. They make it appear as if Israel still did it, if you read the rest of the... You read the rest you of their okay. of their garbage. Read the oh, rest yeah, of their garbage. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Well, now let's see. If, how, how would you read this if you knew nothing, right? Hundreds of people were feared dead after an explosion at a hospital in the Gaza Strip on October 17th, a little, a little over a week after the Palestinian group had staged a stage of terrorist attack oh, wait, how's, how's on Israel. They killed forty and led Israel to declare war and begin bombing the territory. Wait, I like how they call Hamas a group, a yeah. Palestinian group. Uh, not not it, a terrorist organization. Universally yeah, recognized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Universally as a terrorist group. Right, yeah. right. But they're just a group, a group to the New York Times. But but, but look yeah. what they do. They don't. They, they took out that it was Israel, right, in the top half. Mm -hmm. And but they make it basically. You assume it's Israel at the end, right? By saying Israel declared war and began bombing the territory, right? So they they had to throw that in there to kind of put it. Well, the only one doing it. any the only one doing any bombing is Israel. So you would assume with an explosion. Yeah. That if you didn't know anything, you would assume it was Israel. Just look how they describe it now: an explosion at a hospital in the Gaza Strip. What did they say right after it? After it's after it happened, Israeli strike kills at least five hundred. At least five hundred dead. That's uh, that's uh, a, that's that's a, that's a deduction of four thousand five hundred. <laughs> four thousand five hundred people. They were off a little bit. Came back to life all of a yeah. sudden. At least 500, at least. They were right? just off by 4,500 people. So it went from at least 500 dead in strike on Gaza Hospital to hundreds of people were feared dead after an explosion. And they're Gaza bowing hospital. out of their lie gracefully is what they're doing. But the damage has been done. No, 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 no it's 450 point. people. Yeah. Right? Because they, what did they say, 500 well, originally? They started at least 500. So that was the minimum. They're saying at least I remember reading uh, at least 500, least but because of the... The, uh, the no, normally, if it had been 500 you would know. at that stage, given the fact that they haven't done, it, done any excavation yet, they're probably double. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're, they're probably right. double yes, if exactly. it were in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. out in the yes. open Bingo. like that, out in the open like that, you're going to find the bodies pretty Immediate. quick. Right. And by the way, all the territory we saw, which was just, I think, probably right after the attack, you don't see any bodies. You don't see any bodies even carried out. Which means they were they were carried out pretty damn quickly, which means there weren't a lot of them. That's right, but they got their way. That all those meetings were canceled. All the U.S. embassies across the Middle East were uh, were attacked and protested against. And the the it couldn't have been approval, more effective. Yes, yes, approval ratings However, for Israel go down. Let me read you these nice things. Biden says Gaza aid will flow. Oh, more money for the terrorists. Doesn't mention Iran. When he's there, right? And now let's. Oh. Iran hasn't been quiet. Iran is threatening. Oh, this is this comes this comes from Hossein Amir Abdelanian, who is the foreign minister. This is what he posted uh, yesterday evening, after the terrible crime of the Zionist regime. In the bombing and massacre of more than 1,000, he has it at 1,000, innocent women and children in the hospital. He has it at 1,000. Mm -hmm. The time has come for the global unity of humanity against this fake regime, more hated than ISIS and its killing machine. Oh. 
That's Amir Abdelanian. And then he has in, 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 in capitals, time is over. This is this is the uh, this is uh, uh, Obama's friends, uh, the Iranians, uh, who he wants to make a deal with, and to whom he is funneling money as we speak, by reducing dramatically the sanctions that uh, Trump put on them that led them to all those protests that was actually having some effect on the on the on the solidity of the regime. He says the axis of resistance which includes Iran, would open multiple fronts against Israel. And uh, Biden tells us that there's indication that Iran has any role in this. I don't know, did, did Iran give him money too? What the hell does he love Iran for? I mean, Iran literally came out and said, we financed Hamas. But okay, but that's fine. It's no problem. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Uh, Iran so he, doesn't have anything. To do. Yesterday's... Um, <laughs> How would you describe yesterday's protest in the Capitol? There were, they, they say 300 plus arrested. That's a lot arrested at a, at a riot, isn't it? It was peaceful protest. Well, but then They're you have Democrats. If, if it's a peaceful protest, then why the hell are you arresting 300 people? That's a, a particularly since you didn't want to arrest them. Why the hell do they arrest 300 people if it's so peaceful? And were all these people charged with the same crimes as the people no, on January 6th? No, they were all let out on de desk appearance tickets. Oh, they're all home already. That's weird. They that's were weird. let out as quickly a little weird, right? as John Sullivan uh, was let out after he happened to uh, be in the right place at the right time to uh, photograph the killing of Ashley Babbitt. And also he broke into the Capitol, told people to burn things, asked, uh, tweeted out for days in advance for um, for Black Lives Matter and uh, mm. uh, and other people to come there. So none of these people today will be in solitary confinement and treated like garbage. Is that what you're saying? I think they're all out. There's no way they're in there. Mm. These mm. snowflakes. There's interesting. No way these interesting. Can you imagine okay. that? Okay. But remember, but remember, these are the front. These are the. Imagine that mayor. A, you're waving American flag. This is the. Right away this is the U.S. Up. attorney who wouldn't pro prosecute Hunter on a cut and dry case. Right. These people get to go there. So this is a political hack. It's not a U.S. attorney. And this is a guy that they probably is engaged. Some of the biggest human rights violations in the history of this country, he and that court. Man. What they're doing to those people is yeah. uh, uh, historically going to be one of the great human rights scandals in our history. And now you see this and nothing happens to them. I mean, and you, you, you want to tell us we have a system of justice? Mayor, these people were assaulting police officers. I saw the video today. They were beating up police officers. They, I, they I, were, and they, you know, I don't understand. They're culturally appropriating this Jewish. Uh, the 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 whatever the, the these gentlemen there they're not wearing wearing it appropriately. I should know more about it than I do, but that's a I'm I'm, I'm kind of being how they are right. These these are fake Jews in here. No, these they're wearing what they are. What they're doing is they're wearing the prayer garments. Yeah, right. they're not supposed to. Uh, and uh, there's no reason. The only place you wear the prayer garments is in the shul mm -hmm. because you you wear them to pray. Uh, these people were ignorant of that. Right. They think somehow it identifies you as Jewish. Yeah. I mean, they could have worn something else, uh, a Star of David, or, but they put on the, the prayer garments, which would be a blasphemy, which is blasphemy. For, a, right. for a very Orthodox Jew. Yeah. It would be like, you want to make believe you're a Catholic, yeah. and you go steal vestments of a priest yeah. and oh, walk please. around with the vestments yeah. of a priest on. And you say, I'm a Catholic. But you're allowed to do that, like those the sisters of perpetual sinnery or whatever, and like these fake Jews. But if you were to go and do something with Muhammad, they're going to shut you down. But you can do this when it comes to Jews, when it comes to Christians, definitely when it comes to Christians, right? But, but there's no, I mean, there's, I mean, uh, like the guy, the guy who has the thing over his head, that's ah, okay. But there's a guy there with, with the prayer, with the prayer, Shawls on, and right that down, bottom right. Yeah, there's no reason to be wearing that. This, yeah. re this reminds me of there, right there. And I don't actually take offense to it, but right, we're pointing. You know, those, out those aren't even. Yeah. To tell you the truth, those aren't even right. They must have gotten those from some reform synagogue. And those do not look to me like legitimate. Uh, and where are they? And mayor, I can't see them well enough. And now they're doing it. Why aren't they? Uh, speaking out about the plight of the Palestinian people, uh, you know, three weeks ago. They're only out here now after Hamas carries out this atrocious attack. 
and all of a sudden these people are there, all of a sudden they care. It's but I mean, it's I, and, and in the long BS, run, what's the, in, in the long run, what's the difference if they're Jewish or not? I mean, if Jewish yeah. people yeah. support terrorists, they're crazy. Exactly. Uh, yeah. probably even more they're crazy right. than others right. since yeah. the, the target of their yeah. people. The, the, I mean, I have a hard time believing they're Jewish, but I do know that some percentage of the Jewish community doesn't support Israel and supports Palestine. Now, how you can support a country that wants to eliminate your people is a little hard to understand. But there are some Jewish people like that, which of course confa which confounds all my Jewish friends. Yeah. Uh, well, I think people should go out and watch the movie Wag the Dog, because that movie is literally about this. Remember, they had Hollywood producers and stuff in place to create a big farcical yeah. scenario. Yeah. That's essentially what this all is. It's it's a it's a Hollywood script. It's a movie set. That was really based on on Clinton. Yeah, <laughs> that he did he did an airstrike in order to win an election, uh, because he used to bomb a lot of empty fields. Right, people should see that movie because it kind of primes you up for this. So every time they view television, they can think twice. Uh, wait a minute, is this real? People do you have a? Do you just have a picture of that, or do, do you have a? a we have a film where they're moving around, so we could get a better look at their. Give me a second, I'll get a film. I have a well, if you can, if you can. So let's quickly uh, wrap up now. We're we're well into uh, soccer time. Yes, we are. Uh, well, the president interrupted our. Uh, yeah, we were interrupted by uh, a. The speech about Ukraine. Mr. Magoo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what With it was. With the incidental mention of Israel. <laughs> that's a very good way of The plea even, for Ukrainian plea money. For money. <laughs> I don't even remember how much he wants for it. Uh, that's great. Did he mention an amount for Israel? Yeah. I don't remember how much. I, he I went to Israel and we yeah, need a few to stand bucks. with Ukraine. That's, that's, hey, that's hey, literally hey, what he said. That's literally what he said. Wow. Hey, guys, throw yeah. a few bucks in for yeah. Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Give me how much do you want for you? How much do you want for Ukraine now so he and Zelensky can whack it up? That's right. He brought up Zelensky. Well, you know, Zelensky. Well, must... he, could, he couldn't pronounce his name at first. Yeah. Right? Oh. You, you, you know, Zelensky called him on the phone immediately and asked him if his aid's going to stop because we're helping Israel. Yeah. That's, that's, that's you, what you, this you is about. You cheating on me, Joe? Yeah, yeah you, what, Joe, you uh, on my back, Joe? <laughs> Israel's the mistress. Joe, Joe, <laughs> Joe, Joe, Joe. <laughs> Joe. Do, do I have to remind you that uh, <laughs> I have more stuff than Giuliani? <laughs> Giuliani's not sweating. Uh, uh, Zelensky knows he'll be just fine. Yeah, Giuliani's yeah, yeah. got nothing yeah. compared to me. No, he's got I got everything. the whole thing. I got the whole. I, I know where the bank accounts are. He does. I that. know where the offshore bank accounts are, Joe. So I think you just. No way he's double crossing Zelensky. Yeah. No. Yeah. No way he's double crossing <laughs> Zelensky. <laughs> and and uh, Zelensky, if Obama is the uh, puppet master for him. Kolomoisky is the puppet master for Zelensky, right. who was the chief money launderer in, is the chief money launderer in Ukraine. What do you mean was, is, which means he knows where all the bodies are buried. Mm -hmm. wow. Just in case there are other American politicians who take money <laughs> from the most crooked country, or I'm sorry, the second most crooked country in the world. Well, so what, uh, did Jordan hold a vote tonight? If we oh, go yeah. on to another subject? What's going to happen with that? He's oh, relinquishing. Oh, he's, we're going to have a temporary speaker. No, 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 no. Oh, he no, changed wait. his mind. Oh, he changed his mind? Well, I, he must oh. have changed it again because he was going to have a vote tonight. Is that right? Yes. Oh. Did he have a vote tonight? So uh, Jim Jordan, he actually changed his mind a few times today, right? At first he was supporting stepping aside for a little bit and letting so Mr. His original McHenry. one, his original one, I got to say, I'm, and I support Jim, but I think the idea of McHenry. waiting to January it's just, uh, just, uh, just irresponsible. Uh, Stay straight out irresponsible. Never should have suggested that. Yeah. Okay. That, that may have. So then the second the suggestion was, uh, there was a a, a a news release about three o'clock that they were going to have a vote at around five to six. Well, that never took place, right? Yes. The third vote has not taken place. Are they, are they going to do it tomorrow? Well, right now, by Thursday evening, uh, Mr. Jordan. Uh, appeared no closer at winning the post after meeting with some of the 22 GOP lawmakers who oppose his candidacy on the second ballot. So between the first and second ballot, he actually lost four additional members, picking up two of the original 20, but he lost four new uh -huh. ones. So as of tonight, he is pushing to get a third vote, but now it appears he's losing that fight after members throughout the day traded barbs and closed door meetings, a lot of folks were not happy with uh, Jordan's agreement to put McHenry in there. 
until January. That caused a lot of uproar, I'm told, within the within the members only meetings, uh, and may have actually hurt Jordan in what he's hoping to accomplish. Now we're hearing additional names. One name, interestingly enough, that I wouldn't keep this name in mind. Jack Bergman, Michigan. He's right. actually my congressman from my hometown in the UP. That's not why I'm saying it, though. He's uh, the highest ranking military official in Congress. He's conservative. He supports Trump, but he's not thought of as, you know, as maybe by some of the more, some of the people that didn't like Trump in Congress uh, might might be open to someone like Bergman. So it's an interesting name. It's 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 one to 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 keep in mind. It wouldn't be it wouldn't candidate. be at all he's one of the older strange ones. if a name just came you out know, of nowhere, right? And it'd be somebody that uh, it's known among the men. Yeah, and doesn't have uh, a history of you know confrontations with some of them i guess i don't i just i just think any one of the three would have been much better than the situation we're in right now mccarthy scalise or jim you were right about that when did you say it a month ago yep 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 oh, yep you were, oh a month ago he was you're right you, when, when we got rid of mccarthy yeah he said this is a shit show and, and it turned out to be just that and it and, and it doesn't appear as of the summer mayor we don't appear to be any closer than we were the minute McCarthy lost, right? right? The minute he was thrown out. Tonight, we may even be further, right? Away from a solution to this problem. Uh, uh, you should all be informed of the fact that uh, that uh, President uh, Biden, who uh, gave a very uh, dull speech tonight trying to get more money for Ukraine, because I don't think it was a speech about Israel. Uh, the real, um, there was no emotion in the speech at all. He's not capable of it. But to the extent that there was any persuasion in the speech, it was for Ukraine. Uh, he said very little about the terrible attack on Israel. He said nothing about this setup, except that Israel was not responsible. But he said nothing about the horrendous setup that was done here. He did nothing to help Israel uh, reestablish its uh, uh, reputation so we can get fair treatment, which it deserves. As our ally, it deserves it, but and in truth and in conscience, it deserves it, because the the crooked and evil press has them reversed. It's got uh, the terrorists who kill little babies and maybe set up hospitals to get bombed, and certainly lie about the bombing of hospitals as the good guys, and Israel as the bad guys. And one of one of the reasons for that is we don't engage in enough. Persuasion, I would not say propaganda because we shouldn't do propaganda, but we don't engage in persuasion. So if, if I were advising, I would never advise Biden. It would be useless. It would be like advising a two-year-old. But if I were advising a president uh, tonight, I would have devoted tonight only to Israel. And I would have devoted it to the terrible things that happened to Israel. I'd have shown some pictures of it because I'd want to get uh, American opinion on their side, first of all, to make sure we have the support there that we're going to need for a second effort now with Ukraine. And then we have already given Ukraine almost $100 billion. And so, And then I'd be very concerned about world opinion for my friend Israel. But here's my contention, and please, all of you people who are interested in Israel, listen to me, because you're going you're to make a terrible mistake if you trust this guy. He is not a friend of Israel. I don't care what he said when he went there. First of all, he didn't say anything. He was there for seven hours. He was really there to meet with the Arabs, and they didn't want to see him. Uh, when he came out in his pajamas, he looked ridiculous. When he walked out in his pajamas, he looked absolutely ridiculous. And he didn't say anything that's helpful to Israel in the world community. Nothing. And today, tonight, he devoted it to bolstering Ukraine, not Israel. Well, to wrap up, should we play a little clip from uh, Mr. Biden on the plane? Uh, yeah, yeah. Please show the. Yep. Please show the. That's all, folks. Look, I. I spent an hour and a half about with you know, seventeen or eighteen before, and. and I don't know how to say this. Virtually. Two. 
You see that with the hand? He did that three, two or three times tonight. This here. And he just did it there. What the hell is that? I, I was looking at his chin. I was but, looking but, at his what chin. What is this? I think he got some kind of procedure and he's maybe either hurting yeah. or itching because his chin is significantly different than it than it usually is. So I think he got some kind of... The guy needs a brain, not a chin. Well, he got something. <laughs> he got Botox. He got something going on because he he's he's looking weird. His forehead doesn't move. Okay. He's an alien. There, there's <laughs> one thing. There are two things... Two things we have to tell people about that they're not going to hear from the crooked New York Times or anyplace else. Uh, Jack Lew, former Secretary of the Treasury in the Obama administration, is Biden's choice for ambassador to Israel. This guy is a virulent enemy of the state of Israel. I know he's Jewish. This is the guy who organized the cash to the Iranians. This is the guy who did the money laundering transactions that would have kept them hidden if they weren't discovered. This is a guy that should have gone to jail. The Republican senators brought it out yesterday. Now they have to have the guts to vote against him. Uh, it is no, no doubt that Cotton is going to vote against him. Rubio is going to vote against him. Cruz is going to vote against him. But this guy, this guy uh, orchestrated hundreds of millions to a terrorist group that went ahead and killed people with that money, Jack Lou, rather than being ambassador to Israel, which would be one hell of an insult to Israel, to put a friend of Iran as ambassador to Israel, just as much of an insult as a president of the United States going to Israel who wanted to give $6 billion to a country that wants to eliminate Israel. Please, my Jewish friends, think of that. Just think of it. And, I, and if you hate Israel and you're Jewish, I can't help you. But if you love the state of Israel and you're Jewish or not, this president is, a, is evil. He hates Israel. You do not give this kind of money to Iran that is absolutely intent on destroying Israel. Not a joke. Ayatollah has killed so many of his own people. It's nothing for him to kill Jewish people. <sighs> Please remember this. Don't get taken again by the crooked Democratic Party. Jack Lew orchestrated the $1.7 billion that began in January of 2016 that Obama basically tried to launder to Iran so they'd get the money before he went out of office. This guy should be in jail, not ambassador to Israel. And certainly not at a time like this, and never. Second thing, the genius Daniel Henninger for the uh, Wall Street Journal wrote today that the Hamas crisis is a sudden opportunity for Nikki Haley and Mike Pence. I would like you now to play Nikki Haley as we go out, and let's see what kind of, how she took advantage of this opportunity from the genius Daniel Henninger of the brilliant Wall Street Journal. Just for our viewers' edification, according to recent polling earlier this year uh, from the Washington Institute, which is a, a, a pro-Israel group, using the polling of a Palestinian Center for Public Opinion, 62% of Gazans wanted the ceasefire with Israel to stay in place. 50% of Gazans want Hamas to stop calling for Israel's destruction, want Hamas to accept a permanent two-state solution based on the 1967 borders. 70% of Gazans wanted the Palestinian Authority from the West Bank to take over Gaza. So I'm not really sh certain that Governor DeSantis has a real read on the difference between Hamas and the people of Gaza. W what was your response when you heard what Governor DeSantis said? You know, I dealt with this every day for two years. And, you know, what I can tell you is you have to realize that whether we're talking about Gazans and Palestinians, um, you know, all of them don't... You've got half of them at the time that I was there didn't want to be under Hamas's rule. They didn't want to have terrorists overseeing them. They knew that they were living a terrible life because of Hamas. You had the other half that supported Hamas and wanted to be a part of that. We see that with Iran, too. The Iranian people don't want to be under that Iranian regime. They don't. We saw what happened to Masa Amini. We saw how they treat them. There are so many of these people who want to be free from this terrorist rule. They want to be free from all of that. 
And America's always been sympathetic to the fact that you can separate civilians from terrorists. And that's what we have to do. I want you to take a listen to this. Uh, let, let me just sum, sum that up for you. She's right about the Iranian people. The Iranian people over the last five years have conducted just uh, uh, hundreds, if not thousands of protests against the Ayatollah, including holding signs that he should be removed and taken out and been killed for it. So there is a legitimate, strong protest movement in Iran. When have you seen a protest in Palestine against Hamas or Fatah? How many times? Please. Come on, Nikki. Come on, Ambassador. Genius. How many protests? That proved what Numskull, a reporter, was saying. What are you, some kind of naive ass? Who voted Hamas into office? The Palestinian uh, people. Who are taught in school to kill Jews when they're five and six years old? I'm not saying they're inherently evil. I'm saying they're brainwashed. And it is possible they want to be rid of Hamas. But they're not doing a damn thing about it. But I'm going to tell you one thing. They want to kill Jews. And if you don't know that, you sure as hell can't be our president. Because you're either lying so you can make an issue with DeSantis, which is disgusting over something like this. Or you really are a rhino, naive, silly internationalist. And uh, my God, you'd be as bad as a Democrat. Anybody who thinks at this point we should be allowing Gazans to come into America with all the immigration problems we have and with the uh, uh, possibility that we don't know what the hell we're getting and that thinks that there is this whole group of wonderful revolutionary Palestinians that really are just dying for freedom when they haven't had a single demonstration I know of and the, Palest and the Iranians have had probably about 2,000. The intellectual uh, uh, capacity of these left-wingers is non-existent. They can't reason and they can't think. And I'm surprised at Nikki Haley, but that disqualifies her, certainly as a Republican candidate. Communist Party may have an opening for you. Where, where do we find these people? in the Republican Party. She wants people from Gaza to come in because they're really, really, really nice people. I mean, look, there are a lot of nice people in the world that we can't let in. We sure as hell aren't going to let them in from a country that teaches in grammar school to kill Jews and Americans. Not a good idea, Nikki. So just keep that in mind, my Republican friends. Of course, Trump should be the choice, but God forbid, God forbid her. So thank you. And let's say a prayer for the people of Israel who are under tremendous, tremendous pressure. And with this world opinion, uh, terrible. They are chosen people, God. Remember them. And if it wasn't for their faithfulness, and if it wasn't for their bravery, none of us would have a religion. Because they wanted to wipe them out. The Egyptians wanted to wipe them out before Christ. And then there would have been no Christ. And pray for America. Greatest country on earth with all its flaws. Still a country that just seeks to make itself better. Love it. Don't be like Biden. Don't hate it. Start calling us systemic racist. We're not. You know we're not God. You know we're not systemic racist. We've done more about racism than probably any country on earth. More to deal with it. People died to free the slaves. And finally, thank you for letting us be Americans. God bless America. Our purpose to bring to bear the principle of common sense and rational discussion to the issues of our day. America was created at a time of great turmoil, tremendous disagreements, anger, hatred. There was a book written in 1776 that guided much of the discipline of thinking that brought to us the discovery of our freedoms, 
of our God-given freedoms. It was Thomas Paine's Common Sense, written in 1776, one of the first American bestsellers, in which Thomas Paine explained, by rational principles, the reason why these small colonies felt the necessity to separate from the Kingdom of Great Britain and the King of England. He explained their inherent desire for liberty, for freedom, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, the ability to select the people who govern them. And he explained it in ways that were understandable to all the people, not just the elite. Because the desire for freedom is universal. The desire for freedom adheres in the human mind and it is part of the human soul. This is exactly the time we should consult our history. Look at what we've done in the past and see if we can't use it to help us now. We understand that our founders created the greatest country in the history of the world. The greatest democracy, the freest country, a country that has taken more people out of poverty than any country ever. All of us are so fortunate to be Americans. But a great deal of the reason for America's constant ability to self-improve is because we're able to reason, we're able to talk, we're able to analyze. We are able to apply our God-given common sense.